Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Marsha Grayeyes. I work at Change Labs. I'm the director of co-working and we're located in Tuba City. We have a little studio space right um, behind Denny's and near Moen Kopi Legacy Inn. We're just right next to both of those buildings. If you want to come by, um, we should be reopened in towards the end of May. Right now, we're technically, I'm technically at the studio, but we're not quite open. But if you want to drop by, I, I still welcome you in. So um, what we do at Change Labs, we offer several things, but at the co-working space, we do workshops like these. Um, we also provide tools and other resources for native entrepreneurs. And we also have um, people coming in asking us how, how do I start my business? Or if they want to make an appointment with our business coaches, we also do that every Monday for the general public. For our incubator members, they are assigned a business coach um, throughout the year that they are with us and going through our program. And the business incubator selects 10 individual businesses to teach them and pass on knowledge regarding our um, business, businesses on the reservation. Our whole goal is to build sustainable businesses on the reservation that is able to sustain itself and also um, contribute to tribal economy. And another question that we get a lot of is how do I create a website? Um, we have a resident designer that can give you consulting. Um, if you make an appointment with her, she can give you some tips on how to um, pick out the right website for you, the right mode of um, passing information out for your business and also whether or not you're using your business as an e-commerce site or an information site and so forth. And her name is Mariah. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel where we post all of our workshops. Um, if you can't watch an entire wor workshop or can't sit through a live one, you can always uh, sign on to YouTube and look for Change Labs. And don't forget to subscribe. So we have over 30 videos right now and we plan on adding more. Another question that we get a lot of is how do I get help running my business? Um, we also have creative workshops such as this. Um, we provide Wi-Fi, color printing, button making, and various other things in our co-working space. If you also want to hold a meeting, um, we have the space available. Currently, because of the pandemic, we're limiting the use of it. Um, but I believe on the Navajo Nation, we're in the yellow area, meaning that 25% um, of, uh, we are, we're at 25% capacity. With that in mind, um, we are trying to adhere to the Navajo Nation's protocols and so forth in regards to the current things that are happening on our land and all over the US all over the world for that matter. We also have uh, Res Rising, which is an app that you can, that you can register your business on. Uh, it acts like a yellow page and it gives a little bit of information about who you are and what services you provide, what times you're open, your location. So just about anyone can search on Res Rising we have over 630 businesses on our, on our website currently, and we plan on adding more. And if you have any other questions, you can always email me at marsha at nativestartup.org. And I'd like to ask you to stay on mute until Q&A. You can always type your questions in the chat window. And this session is being recorded. And I'd like to... Also invite you to join us for our next webinar, which is going to be May 5th at 10 a.m., 11 a.m. MBT, which is Mountain Daylight Time or Reservation Time.
Now I'm going to introduce Crystal Dugay. She is one of our business incubator members. She's also a lo local artist and she's doing this uh, workshop and it's called Turning Your Passion Into a Business. And we really excited to have her um, do a webinar for us and also, you know, as part of a, a project she is doing for um, Change Labs Incubator. And I'm really excited to have her. I'd like to turn this time over to her without further ado, the awesome Crystal. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, my name is Crystal Dugai. I own Crystal L. Dugai, which is an art company um, that I am currently working on on the incubator. So um, a little bit about me, I'm Tukabanha, born for Tlizahlane. Uh, my Chays are Loka and my Nalis are Tede, excuse me. I'm originally from a couple of places. Uh, I moved around a lot when I was a kid. Um, I'm from, I currently reside in Tanalia and that's where I work out of. Um, to start off this webinar, uh, I um, wanted to define passion, so. Um, uh, for me, passion is something you like doing for free. So Marcia, you can go to the, the first slide. Um, so passion for me is something that I define as doing for free. Um, you enjoy it. You, you find it that you're doing it to make yourself happy and it helps you find yourself. And I think the most um, recognizable thing for me for somebody who's chasing a passion is that they sacrifice time for it. They sacrifice money for it. They, it's not something that um, they're particularly working on at the moment, but they love doing it every once in a while. And then it just starts growing and growing and growing and growing. So that's what passion is to me. So for me, my passion is art. I started making art uh, back in a long time ago when I was younger, I, I did a lot of art, but um, in 2016, I was diagnosed with a uh, bipolar disorder. So I spent a lot of time at home uh, because I was going in and out of uh, symptoms and it was just very, very uh, rocky road. So I needed to find something to stabilize that for myself. And I always turned back to art while there was sewing, painting, drawing, pastels, like whatever I could find around the house, I would start making art with it so I noticed that that was kind of like my first click um I like doing this I enjoy doing this so uh what, the time that I spent at home I started making art um I would paint uh I would draw I would make dresses and um so that's how I knew that it was my passion uh I I chased it and this is where um uh the love comes in, uh, love for passion. Passion and love, I think, are very much connected. Okay, so this is the first step to turning your passion into career is to practice, 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 practice. Once you find your passion, whether it's art, whether it's sewing, whether it's beading, whether it's making commercials or just something that you enjoy doing that you find yourself doing on, on the side. Um, so this is where practice comes in. You practice, you practice, you practice. Um, you hone your skill. And I really, really love this quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson. And he said, every artist was first an amateur, which is true. When you first start out as an artist, you are just making what you love, whether it's drawing happy faces, whether it's drawing flowers. Um, you need to practice, uh, practice, practice, practice. Um, I read somewhere that it takes 10,000 hours to become a pro, a professional. Um, and that I calculated that to if you were doing 40 hours a week full time, that's 250 weeks and that's 4.8 years. And that's working every day, eight hours a day. And uh, doesn't necessarily mean you're always gonna be paid. Um, it um, the part uh, the hard part about transitioning from a passion to a career is that is the sacrifice the sacrifices you're going to make um, so turning a passion into a career um, you'll definitely be everything on your own at the beginning you'll be the painter you'll be the sewer you'll also be 
your first employee and your first employer. So you're gonna be like, okay, I'm hiring myself and I also have to be my own boss. I have to take action. I have to wake up every morning at eight and I have to start painting. And um, so the transitioning part is the work part. So you'll find yourself working long hours. You'll definitely find yourself enjoying those long hours. And I think that's the important part of recognizing passion um, and transitioning into career is recognizing that you love it. So, um, so this is probably my favorite part. Uh, I started uh, a notebook. So especially for this, for this incubator, I have a notebook right here. Um, so start a notebook. I recommend starting a notebook if you wanna start taking uh, your passion seriously. And especially when you're gonna be working and doing it the rest of your life, you need stability. So I start off with a notebook. I was telling, um, my incubator members last uh, are during our session that I have over 70 notebooks. Um, and that's sketchbooks, that's notebooks, that's things I write down every day. Um, they're not necessarily in any order, but I highly recommend writing down everything, ideas, dreams, goals, likes, dislikes. Um, this is where you start to do that work. Um, you do you research, you Google, you, um, you buy books. Uh, that's really, really important when it comes to transitioning from a passion to a career is to take it seriously. So the next um, important thing is to invest in yourself. Um, I highly recommend um, for an artist uh, to get an iPad, um, to invest in art supplies, um, to invest in programs. And this is where uh, it's important to invest time. So time to hone your skill, time to write in your notebook, time to assess maybe your passion, uh, maybe to, specific, to specify it. Like for me, my art, um, it mostly revolves around painting and digital artwork. And I kind of chose those because I enjoy them the most. Um, and I also enjoy designing mugs. So this is where uh, it goes back to sacrificing. Uh, you're gonna be and sacrificing time and money at the beginning, but it doesn't mean that you're not gonna get it back. You, you will see it if you keep working. Um, um, so that's the investment. So the investing in yourself, time, money, effort, love sleep sometimes so definitely definitely invest in yourself seek resources yes um i i have been so lucky to have change labs uh change labs has changed so much for my business in the right direction i went into it a little blind because I did recognize that I did love art. It was my passion. I did want to do it. I just didn't know how. And so that's where I took the time to research. Um, and I found Change Labs. And I also have a few friends um, that are uh, that had knowledge of Change Labs. So here is where you connect with fellow business owners, with kindreds, uh, people who love art, people who love sewing. So open up your circle and um, find a mentor and um, connect with family, connect with friends. This is where you start putting yourself out there. Uh, you start finding work. Um, you post to social media. You uh, you sell to family and friends because that's where your inner circle begins. And um, when you have a passion, that's where it's always going to be. It's always going to be at home. It's always going to be in your heart. It's always going to be with family and friends. And they're going to see it the most. Um, so I highly recommend seeking uh, kindreds, uh, people who, who know about art. Uh, I recommend following artists fellow artists and um, YouTube uh, is definitely a big one that I do. Um, also to buy books. Uh, I bought a lot of books, um, especially on art and on business, business ideas. Um, 
so I definitely have invested a lot into figuring everything out. And it's not that I have it all figured out. I still see the bumps. I still see the, the obstacles, but knowing that you have a notebook, you have a plan, um, knowing that you love doing what you do, that kind of helps get you through those little obstacles of not knowing what you're doing, but deep down knowing it's what you want to do. So, so build a network. Uh, this for me was the biggest, um, the biggest discovery, I guess, of starting a business is that I couldn't do it alone, no matter what, there's nothing in, in art that you can do alone, except for the painting. I mean, sitting and creating art, you can do yourself, but to open up your business and to open up your, it into your life, you have to realize that you are going to be interacting with people. That's what a career is. A career is um, creating something and sharing it with the world. Um, so I highly recommend posting it, get your art out there, uh, post it, post it, post it, post it. And even if it's, even if it's not something you think that is worthwhile, like just post it, it it'll, it'll, it'll grab somebody. And that's what, that's the beauty of art. Um, and I also recommend commenting, liking, sharing. I know with social media, it's kind of hard to get yourself out there, especially with like algorithms. And um, that's why I take the time to search out for other artists, um, to reach out, to comment, to, to heart their work, to, to get my name out in a positive way where I'm creating a circle um, that I can tap into if I need to. Um, so, and the port, heading down that direction, um, it's important to be real. Once you build that, that network, be real. Be real with your customers, be real with yourself, be real with your family, be as raw as you can be um, because this is your passion, this is your love, this is your baby. So you need to protect it, and you also need to, um, you also need to protect it. I guess. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting off track. Um, when building a network, I think it's important to have compassion. Uh, compassion is for yourself and for your clients. Um, I always pride myself in. Uh, thinking I have customer service um, because I have compassion. I know people are busy. I know uh, people have lives and you also, you yourself have to have a life as well. So that's part of building a network and knowing how to navigate it um, is really important as well. Um, and mostly just get yourself out there. This one is probably one of my, um, biggest things that helps me keep afloat is I know my heart it, know your heart it's I read that it's hard to be poor of course and it's hard to be rich you just have to pick which hard that you want to work at or which hard that you want to face so know your heart some days you're not going to want to work and some days you are just going to be like on it on it on it so those days that you do not want to work, you become the boss, you become the owner, you become, you get out of bed, you package those cups, you paint those paintings, you do the to-do list. So this is where uh, you become your own boss. And I know I always see like, be your own boss, be a boss babe. And I love all that. That's just uh, stuff that I feed myself. Um, when it comes to positivity, I'm like, be a boss, be a boss, be a boss. Because uh, part of being a business, oh, excuse me, so sorry. <laughs> part of being a business owner is knowing that you have that freedom and the freedom to, to wake up late if you want to, but you also have that freedom to wake up at 5 a.m. and get those five paintings out. So know your heart and be your own boss. Hojo. Um, very, very important when building your own business is to have faith. Um, you're not going to know exactly the direction that you're going in. Um, part of being a passionate person is always knowing that you know what you want, but, um, but there's also the doubt and there's also the 
everything that comes piling down on you when you realize what you're building and that it's something that you love. So I always say it's not without great effort because um, it's not you. People see the the business that you built, but they don't see that you woke up at 3 a.m. and you did this and you did that, but that's for you to know and that's for your belief and that's for your that's for you too. So believe in yourself. And um yeah, so that's uh that's about it um when it comes to turning your passion into a career. So I went a little quickly and I'm open for questions. I have a question. Yes. <laughs> and I see another question coming in, in the chat, but so I'll get mine quickly is um, when, I mean, I mean, your journey is very specific around art and I'm curious how, or what was the point or how did you know that, that, you know, this is something that you could do viably from a financial perspective? Like, how did you know, for example, how much to sell your first paintings for when you were, when you just got started or, um, and how did you, how did, what was the point when you realized, you know, oh, there's a market for this. Like there's an actual customer out there who's going to buy it. Cause I, I feel like that, that seems in your story to be that transition between this is something I do for me to this is something I can share with the world and and that's the biggest leap, I think, for a lot of folks. So I'm just curious for you, how did you know how to price some of that early artwork? And then how did, what was the turning point for you when you realized, oh, wow, I could, I could totally make a living selling this and I, and I want to do this. I'm passionate about it. Um, I think that the transition for me was, um, at first I sold to family and friends. That was my, that was kind of my, my, my um, first transactions. I would post and my family would be like, oh my God, I love that. Are you selling it? And for a while it took me, um, it took me time to let go because I had an emotional connection to my work because I was just creating it to, to find my center. And so I would sell to family based on just what what I created the art for, uh, because at that point it wasn't for lucrative. Lucrative. It wasn't for it to be lucrative. Uh, it was just an emotional outlet. And um, once I I I have like the best family, the best best family. So kudos to them for giving me that first kind of boost, that boost, like you can sell this, like you. So the first, the first time I ever um, was like, I could do this. I could make money out of this because my family, my family was the one who verbalized it. My family was very supportive. Like I will buy that. I will buy that. And I'm like, no, you can have it. I'm like, no, no, no I'm buying it. I'm buying it. And then once I got that and I'm like, oh, okay. And then uh, that's where the research came in. Um, at first I was letting go of art at just cost uh, for the canvas, the paint, the, you know, they're just, just um, getting my, getting my, uh, my income back or my money back that I spent on it. And once I noticed that I could actually support myself a little bit, um, because I wasn't, I was without a job. I just did my research and I started like a little rubric of little uh, percentages of how much I wanted to make, like 20%, 30%, 40%, or I would just double what I um, spent on the canvas. Because back then I wasn't, I wasn't uh, thinking in the art mind of like, okay, I want to get the professional canvas with the professional paint. And that's how my mind is now. But at the time, I think the transition came when I kind of felt that I was I was prepared to let go of my art. Once I was prepared to let go of it, I was like, take it. I was like, yay, have it, be happy with it. Um, so I think it's just, it's a, it's a own little force within yourself that, uh, that you feel when you're like, okay, 
this is it. Like, this is it. It's a little kind of like, aha, like little light bulb. Like I can make money off of this because first off I had the support and then I had realized this, this next support after that had to come from me. I had to be the one to tell myself, okay, let it go. Uh, and this is it. I'm like, this is something I want to do. So yay. Um, let me go to the chat and any recommendations for art programs? Um, is that like programs school or do you mean like, oh, iPad, okay, art programs. I highly recommend Procreate and Adobe Photoshop for uh, Adobe, you can get on uh, Microsoft. And then on the iPad, you can get Procreate and Procreate is just amazing. It's like a, it's drawing on paper and you can print it out, but it's on an iPad, which makes it even more fun and even more like, ah, like satisfying. So definitely Procreate for an iPad and Adobe Photoshop for um, uh, Microsoft. And I also recommend any drawing apps, like even if they're free, there's a, there's a journal app that I like to use. Um, it's just a it's just a dinky little journal app, but you can draw on the little pages, and I like doing that too. So that any kind of art art um, programs, do it, especially the free ones. Experiment, try. You don't have to pay anything for those, but as long as you're doing art and making art, I think that you can benefit from any program. Um, how do you balance personal and work life? Oh my gosh, I actually. They're they're in they're they're so connected right now, my personal and my work life, that um, I'm actually working on separating them more because I work from home a lot, so I tend to relax a lot, relax my work, um, which is going to change because I'm working on a studio now, so I'll be able to like hop over to the studio and do the work there. So, but for the most part, I take time to do things that aren't artsy. Um, uh, to, 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 to kind of break apart from the work and the, and, but the thing though, is like, when you love what you do, you, you do it even when you're not working. Um, cause I sketch a lot. Uh, I journal, I doodle, um, lately I've been walking, uh, with my dog. So I just take time to like what I would do if I wasn't at a regular job. Like that's the personal part. Like I travel, I, hang out with friends and then the work part I in the studio or I'm working on a balance sheet or so it's just I it's just separating them I guess into different areas <laughs> when did you transition to go full-time selling your artwork to the general public um about 2017 to about 2017, I started really selling my artwork to anybody, anybody who um, commented, anybody who reached out. I made the effort to, to start doing custom work. Um, this was a little bit after I realized that I could make art, I make an income off of art. So that's when I kind of opened up the idea of a business um, selling it and making custom work because I realized custom work is just so um, neat, wanted and um, sometimes needed because people go through, people are always going through stuff. So um, custom work just kind of helps heal, I think, because it gives something, everybody, it gives the customer something specific to to ask for and to love um, for the piece. So it took a while to transition, about a year. Um, when you are an independent freelance artist, owning your own business, being the boss and working, supplying yourself, so how do you pull yourself out of despair when it hits? An example being the days you have no motivation to work because you're worried others are or will do better at a project than you, or you find out you aren't making as much money as you hoped when you first started. Ooh, um, I've had many of those days. I've had days where just the despair hits hard and I'm like, what am I doing? Am I running this business right? Am I, am I succeeding? Um, am I, are my customers happy? Are, on those days, I look at my art. Um, I acknowledge my, uh, I want to say talent. I guess like talent, yeah, because it takes, it takes a while to build that um, 
to build the talent, like like I said before, with the when you're first an amateur, um, you are an amateur, you know you. Uh, but I think that my artwork heals me because um, I'll look at a piece and I'm like, man, I created that. Like, okay, I think it's cool. Then I think it's cool. So somebody else will probably think that too. So I kind of just make turn it into a positive. Um, it takes work, but it's there. Uh, my art kind of saves me uh, from myself too, because I see a physical representation of my love, of my peace, of my effort. So use your art, use, use what you're doing to pull yourself back out because, you know, everyone has talent, everybody has something they're good at. And that's what you reach for uh, as a person, as an artist, um, because that's what you're trying to give to the public too. So you have to give that to yourself. Um, where are the apps again? Um, I actually have an iPad. I have the iPad Pro. So if you just go to the app store, um, I have Procreate. So Procreate is a, is a drawing program where, um, so Procreate for the iPad and Adobe Photoshop for the Microsoft is what I recommend. Um, would you say digital art is easier to learn or pen to paper? Um, digital art is a little bit of uh, a little bit more difficult because you have to learn the program. You have to learn the um, you have to learn the program. That's the part that's difficult. Uh, you got to learn the pencil. You got to learn the touch. You got to learn the colors, the palette, the the cutting, the pasting. But that's all fun, though. It's not. It there's there's fun in both um, because with digital art, you can manipulate art. You can manipulate and you can. It's very quick and it's very um, it's very forgiving. Um, but with paper and pen, uh, I think it's a it's 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 also the same. It's forgiving because you can erase and you can draw over it. But with pen and paper, it's raw. It's it's um, it's like doodling. It's like your first thoughts. So I really enjoy um, both. I recommend both if you want to become a professional, um, because you you're not going to always have your iPad, but you can always carry a notebook. And when you're meeting clients, um, you can have both. Um, it, they they both help. I think they're both beneficial. Um, thank you, Crystal. Great. Thank you. What accounting software do you recommend and what payment platforms do you find easy to use? I use as many platforms of payment as I can and I just have them um, go into one account. So I do use Square, I do use PayPal, I use Venmo, I use Cash App, I use Zelle. Uh, I, feel, I feel like the more options I give my clients, um, the easier it is for both of us. Um, and then I just have all those apps just filter payments into one bank account. And I just recently discovered Wave, thanks to Marsha for um, my sophomore for software for accounting. And so far, it's been really fun. It's been really good. It's been easy. Um, so I definitely recommend the more options you give to your clients, the easier it will be for both of you. Um, here's the link to the Procreate for iPad. Yay. Okay, you're amazing, Crystal. You're truly one. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Uh, what do you say about competition? Art is everywhere. What do you keep? What influences you? Oh, uh, when it comes to competition, I am blown away. I blow my, I follow people that make amazing art. I try to follow everyone. Um, on my Instagram, I follow 5,670 people. And a lot of those are artists because I like my feed to be, um, always changing so I, I I recommend following anybody in your field everybody because nobody's going to make the same art and everybody's going to have different art everybody has a different life so when it comes to competition I don't really think of it as competition I just think of it as inspiration um so I keep color palettes in mind that's what I keep from um other people's art I love 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 looking at people's art and just seeing the palettes and like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna try that palette. But that's the thing about finding inspiration is that you change it for yourself. You, you let it fill you and then you come up with something that hopefully will inspire someone else. Um, 
where can we find your IG, Facebook, other platforms? Um, on let me type them into the chat. Um, I have for my Instagram, it's Crystal Dagai. Um, and then for my um, Facebook, it's Crystal L Dagai. I have two Facebooks. Um, you can follow either one. And how do you put your art on shirts and cups? Oh, um, I actually have printers for the shirts and the cups. Um, I use a local printer for my shirts. His name is Last Minute Screen Printing. And he's on Facebook, amazing, 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 amazing person. Um, and then for my cups, I use a website. Uh, I use several websites actually, depending on what kind of cups I want. And it's just, it's, it's part of learning about the business um, that you can't do all the work yourself. Like you eventually have to navigate out and find some suppliers and it'll help. Um, so for my cups, I actually uh, get them from a supplier. Um, do you set simply, do you set monthly sales targets for yourself? And what are the ways that you think about success for your business? I should set better monthly sales targets. Um, but for the most part, I have a target in mind that I do set. Um, but with the pandemic, it's just been so woo, like up and down, up and down, up and down. So I mostly just hope for more orders. Um, and sometimes I'll get slammed and then sometimes I'll just be really quiet. So it just depends. Um, so I think after the pandemic, when it starts getting steady, I'll definitely set more monthly sales targets. And what are the ways that you think about success for your business? I think success for my business would probably be making it self-running. Um, like I could take a week off and it's still, orders will still be going out and self-sufficient um, would probably be something successful. And Honestly, I think that if I, every time that I get positive feedback, every time somebody shares a post, that's success for me too. Um, I love it. I love that my art is making someone happy and someone excited and someone excited to get mail. And so uh, that's success for me. So I, I feel success already <laughs> considering how small I am. Um, I can't imagine where that success will lead. Uh, it's a little nerve wracking, but it's still fun. Uh, what's your Instagram? Uh, my Instagram was right there. The link crystal .e is my Instagram. So yeah, give it a follow. Uh, I post, I try to post, I should post more often. Uh, I do post my artwork. Um, I post paintings, digital artwork. Uh, I'm transitioning my profile into mixture of life and um, artwork. So you'll see a little bit more uh, behind the scenes, probably painting, um, painting time lapses. Uh, I just joined TikTok too. My TikTok is the Crystal Dugai too. So I just joined TikTok. So yeah. Okay, when you use third party to print shirts and cups, oh, sorry, are you worried? of art theft um a little a little bit i do worry about it but um there's no stopping it uh it's not it's not a choice of uh it's not a choice of of ignoring it it's just that sometimes it happens um you just got to learn to face it um, face it in a positive way uh, sometimes it do, you do have to reach out and tell them, hey, that's my artwork. Um, it's not like, we just have to be really kind about it. Uh, I have had it happen a couple of times, but um, I under, I had a lot of people who are understanding like, oh, I just saw it, I didn't know, uh, and they'll take it down. So if you're really kind about it, then it's not that big of a deal because most people um, don't know, don't know that they can't just take art and, so uh, I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> it says, are your t-shirts printed as per order or do you buy, I buy in bulk and sell. Uh, I will buy anywhere from 70 to 100 shirts and just sell it. Um, I, it's just the cost of printing a shirt per order is a lot higher than just 
uh, buying in bulk. So I choose the bulk route. Um, you can actually print shirts yourself if you make your own t-shirt um, screen printing. I don't do that. I just don't have the time to do that. That's the thing because I paint so much. Uh, painting is my is my main my main jam. So, uh, yeah, Ed, do you envision bringing your art and business to the res, like a gallery or something? Yes, 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 yes. I uh, that's part of my dreams and my goals is to open a gallery, and I would love to do it in Tuba. I would love to do it in a little shop. Um, I know that uh it's it's something challenge i've seen people do it i mean people are opening shops in phoenix all the time and so for sure for sure look for look forward to your crystal e shop in the future you're welcome thank you everybody i don't know if anybody has any more questions all right everyone if there's no more questions for crystal i'd like to just invite you to our next webinar will be on Wednesday, Cinco de Mayo Day, May 5th. Um, please don't forget to register. And our speaker would be the owner of Asha Beauty. So we look forward to seeing you there. And also, if you have any questions or if you would like uh, the video to be emailed to you, um, I will be doing that sometime this week. My email address, however, is if I should forget or if you have any other questions, you can email me at marsha at nativestartup.org. And you can also visit our website at nativestartup.org for any upcoming workshops, webinars, or to make an appointment with our coaches, or even just to reach out and let us know that you're out there. So um, thank you all for coming and have a great day. Bye.